Hey, good day, it's President. Thanks for stopping by. Now, I'm working on a project for my Bridgeport milling machine today, and it's a sort of a quick set quill handle. And I showed this in a previous update video that I did, and I was waiting on a part to turn up so I could finish it. And that's uh, happened. I've been able to get about 98% of the machine done. And the last operation is to drill a cross hole in the body of this, uh, this handle. And I thought it was a good opportunity to have a look at some methods of edge finding and centre finding on the milling machine. And I've got a new tool I want to try out. And I've got some other tools laid out here that I use fairly often and some I rarely use. But we'll look at each one of them in turn and talk about the pros and cons of each type. Now this is the quill handle I've been working on for the Bridgeport milling machine. Now this is not my idea. I saw this on a channel called Projects Down Under and I'll leave a link in the description below to the video which shows the entire build. And I believe you can buy these as a commercial item as well. But when I saw the original video I thought gee that's something I could really use in my workshop and it will make it a lot easier to use a turret style milling machine like a Bridgeport. Because one of the issues is that the, the stock handle that's fitted to a bridge fort can only operate through a range of around about 120 degrees before it sort of spins around at the back and it's very awkward to use. Now with this, this uh, handle is spring loaded so it can be pulled in and out or pulled in and released to come out again and what that does is retracts this pin here. So when you pull the handle in toward the head of the milling machine the pin retracts and what you can do is reposition it and let the handle go and the pin will go back into one or several holes around the quill shaft extension. So you can have the handle in a comfortable position to use all the time. Now the last thing I need to do on this is to drill a hole around about here. It needs to be positioned very accurately from this end face of the, the boss here and that would mean that you need to edge find that surface and then offset a very precise dimension. I also need to centre find on the diameter of the part as well. So what I thought I'd do is to do that operation but at the same time we'll have a look at some of the tools that we've got set up here and these are all used for edge finding and centre finding on a milling machine. And we'll talk about the pros and cons of each and then I want to show you this one, this new one that I just bought and how that's going to work with Touch DRO. Anyway, let's have a closer look. Right, this uh, first one I bought some time ago and I hardly ever use it. Uh, it's a sort of an opto-electric or an opto-acoustic type edge finder and it works by having a spring-loaded ball bearing on the end of this extension here which is insulated from the body of the tool. Now, when you short circuit between the ball and the body of the tool, you'll hear a, a tone and you'll also see a red light come on in that window. So it sort of works like this. And they're supposed to be very accurate. Uh, the only problem with this is that it takes a really weird sort of battery. And also the amount of stick out from the spindle in the machine is quite extensive. So it's a bit of a nuisance to set up. And you have to fit it in a, a very large diameter collet. So uh, although it works, and uh, I guess in some instances it would be useful, uh, I, I just don't use it very much. The other problem with this is that the diameter of the ball is quite large. That's a 10 millimeter diameter ball. And if you want to fit that inside a small bore, it's quite difficult. So there it is, but I don't use it very often. This is probably the go-to tool that I use most often on the Bridgeport milling machine. And this style of edge finder is super reliable. It's robust, it's easy to use, it's short and compact. And the way it works is it has two spring-loaded halves and it's held together just by the tension of the spring and when you set this up in a collet in the spindle and bring it up against the workpiece it will generally be out of alignment like that and then as you approach the edge it will start to come into concentricity and then when it finally reaches the edge point it will kick out sideways so it's a visual thing as soon as you see that happen you know you've reached the edge and you just have to offset by the radius of either of these two diameters here so the smaller one in this case is 4 millimetres, the larger one is 10. The imperial versions I think use like 2 tenths of an inch for the small one and I don't know, probably 3 eighths of an inch for this diameter here. And like I say, it's, uh, it's just quick and easy and simple. So uh, that's, that's the one that I'm using most often at the moment. This style here is sometimes called a wiggler 
and this is made by Eclipse. Uh, I think uh, Starrett make one, a few other companies as well. And this one's a little bit different in that it's got a, a ball end on it which is held captive in a sort of a spring collet. And you would grip this in a drill chuck and these do work if you fit them in a drill chuck whereas this style here really needs to be in a collet to be accurate. But you could also fit that in a collet and then lower it down into the centre of a bore or against the edge of a piece of work and it will initially run out and as you bring it up close to the edge it makes contact and finally finds the edge this stem will kick out quite suddenly and it's very sensitive and very easy to see when you've reached the edge of the work and the advantage with this one here is it's got a very long extension so you can reach a long way down inside a ball or you can uh, reach down over the outside of a very large diameter piece of work. So uh, I like this one here and I do use it, but it's sort of uh, imperial. This uh, ball end on this is a quarter of an inch, whereas my other one is metric. Uh, and it does come with a couple of uh, alternative uh, points to go on the end of it. So this one here has a very small diameter cylindrical end on it. And don't ask me why, but that is 2.52 millimetres diameter. Now initially I thought that that would be uh, like 3 seconds of an inch because that's a quarter of an inch. And uh, don't ask me why they've used such a weird diameter on the end there. But that's what it is. And as long as you know what the diameter is, you can offset by half that diameter to find an edge. Now it also has a very long tapered point. And this is really good for fitting inside a centre punch mark. So if you're trying to find the centre of a previously punched position on a piece of work, you can drop that point into the centre punch mark and lift it out again. Now if it stays running true, you know you've got it accurate. If it comes out and it wiggles, you know you're, well, you still need to adjust it. So that's why these are sometimes called a wiggler. But there it is there and uh, I do use it, but uh, probably this other one is the one I use most often. All right, now stepping up in accuracy, we then get to this style here. Now, this is one that I made a while ago and it's uh, Stefan Gotchwinter's design and it uses a dial test indicator and it can be adjusted and this works really well in small diameter bores or fitting over the outside of small diameter pins. And uh, the advantage of this one here is that this extension fits into your collet and it rotates around and you can always see the face of the dial and this can be used for finding the centre of a bore, also the centre of a like, pin. Uh, you can also use it for edge finding. And, uh, and then along the same lines we have the style here which is uh, sometimes called an Indicol. And this one here has probably got uh, bigger capacity, you can uh, extend it over large diameters. And this one clamps to the spindle nose in the bridge port. So you can set that up, clamp it on, do your edge finding, take it off again without having to disturb the tool. But these are super, super accurate and you can see at a glance how accurate you are. With all of the other ones that I've shown you, you're sort of relying on that visual thing that, you know, when it kicks out and if you, you know, overcompensate, uh, you may not get it exactly where you think you have. But with this you get direct feedback, you can see straight away where the needle lands on the dial and you know that you've got it accurate. Now <clears throat> these are delicate of course, you've got to be very careful with them not to knock them around or drop them. And uh, you don't want to sort of accidentally turn the machine on with this in the spindle. So uh, these are sort of a high risk but high reward <laughs> style tool. And uh, I have used this one here for checking the accuracy of some of the other tools that I've shown you. But uh, like I say, these are probably the most accurate way of edge finding and center finding. All right, let's have a look at the last one. So this is the latest in my arsenal of edge finding and center finding tools. Now this is a full 3D touch probe and it can register movement in both X and Y and also in the Z direction. And I've got two of these. I use one on my little CNC milling machine and this one is specifically for the bridge port. Now, I bought this on AliExpress and I think for a memory it cost about $120. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to find this particular tool. Uh, they're made in China but they're actually very very well made. Uh, this has four screws around the spindle which allow you to 
center it if it's not concentric. But I find that straight from the factory, they're already accurate and you don't need to do anything to adjust them. Now the stylus tip is two millimeters in diameter and it's just uh, hardened steel. Uh, the better quality ones would have a synthetic ruby on the tip there, but for what I do, this is fine. The stylus probe itself is replaceable, and you can unscrew that, put a new one on there. Now, the interface is via a regular USB connector. There it is there. It actually comes with the tool. And on the other end of that, I've got a four-pin aviation connector. Now, it only needs three pins, but I only had a four-pin connector, so I've used that. So the connections to either your CNC controller or to touch DRO are via a 5 volt plus voltage, a ground wire and a signal wire. And that's all you need to do to connect it to the, the board, the touch DRO Bluetooth adapter. And this particular probe has a window around the stylus there with two different colored LEDs. So in its resting mode, it glows green, but when it registers a contact, it glows red. Now the one that I use on the little CNC machine is in its own dedicated Morse Taper 3 collet chuck and that way I don't need to ever adjust it. I run it in the lathe, I put an indicator on the tip of the stylus there, I know it's accurate so I just leave it as it is and I swap it out in the spindle as I need it. So this is the Bluetooth adapter for Touch DRO and when you purchase the Touch DRO device it comes on a circuit board like that and uh, it's sitting inside a 3D printed case here. Now you can download the files for this 3D printed case from the Touch DRO website and there are different versions depending on what sort of scales you're using and what sort of accessories that you want to include. Now on the, uh, the board itself there are a set of pins for a probe and also a tachometer. So there is a separate file available for this side panel here which has either one hole or two holes depending on whether you want to use just the probe or you want to include the tachometer. So I modified this one to suit uh, so it would actually fit this style of connector here. And on the board itself there are pins for the probe and you can hard solder directly to those pins. So uh, just I can't remember offhand but there is a, a board diagram like a pin out diagram and it allows you to work out which of these three pins here you need to connect to the different wires on your Touch Pro. I'll, I'll put it up on the screen. <laughs> it's probably the best way. Uh, so if you're thinking about doing this, you can just go back to this video and work out which pin you need to use for which wire. Now, uh, when I connected up uh, my probe, I used uh, that four pin aviation connector and I printed a special clamp on the back of this uh, tubing arm here and I can sit the touch probe in a hole in the back of that clamp and that way when I'm not using the probe it just sits up there it's not in the way, it's not rolling around chips and coolant on the milling machine table but it's ready for use when I need it. So I think uh, if you're going to have one of these and you want to leave it attached permanently you really need to have a storage place out of the way where it won't get damaged. Now on my part here I need to be able to drill a hole which has to be positioned very accurately from this face and of course it needs to be centered across the diameter of the stock as well. Now we also need to be very careful about aligning these faces of the slot here and I figured out the easiest way to do this is to actually rest this on a parallel and then drop it down between the vise jaws, tighten up the vise in that position and then what we can do is we can center fire between the vise jaws and then touch off against this left hand face here and move over. Now I want to show you why we have to drill this hole and why it needs to be positioned accurately. So let's have a look at the quill handle on the bridge port. So on the bridge port there's this thing here which is like a quill shaft extension. Now there are two grooves running around the outside circumference of that cylindrical protrusion there. And on the face of this flange here, there are a set of drilled holes. Now on the inside of the handle boss, there's a pin and the pin can engage in any one of those holes there. So you can reposition the handle and still have it drive the quill downwards. Now also on the inside of the bore, there's a spring ball detent and that ball can engage in one of the two grooves here. So you can see those two grooves there quite clearly and uh, when we fit the handle to the machine normally it slides over like that and you can push it on so the ball detent fits into this outermost groove here 
And what that means is that the handle is held in place there, but it won't actually drive the quill at all. And I'm guessing that's because you may want to use the power down feed on the mill. And that means that this handle can just sort of free wheel and it won't rotate round as the quill moves down. But if you want to move the quill manually, you push it all the way on and it will engage on this innermost track here and therefore be able to drive the quill. Now what I need to do today is to drill a hole in the part that we've got in the vise that lines up with either of these two grooves, doesn't matter which one, and we'll put a ball down through the drilled hole and hold it in place with a spring and that way it's sort of held on there and I never need to remove it. Uh, I can actually reposition the handle without sliding it off this extension at all. I've got a 6mm R8 collet in the spindle there now and we can put our touch probe into the collet and tighten it up. And what we can do now is we can touch off against this face here. Now if you didn't have touch DRO, I sort of guess that you'd be able to do it just visually by looking at the colour of the LED. So let's have a look at how that might work. Okay, let's move the part over now and you'll notice a change in the colour of the LED. Alright, so change from green to red, that means we touched off against that face there. Now with a regular edge finder, when you touch off like that, you'll see the edge finder kick outwards and you can go backwards and forwards and fine tune the position until you're sure you touched off. Now with this, if I keep moving the table to the left in my case, I'm not going to notice any change in the colour of the LED, it's going to stay red. So it's a little bit arbitrary, you know, you sort of see that change and you've got to judge whether you've stopped moving exactly when you see the colour change in the LED. Now with practice I'm guessing you could work it out and I'm sort of just moving backwards and forwards there and you could then reset the micrometer dial on your table and then move across by half the diameter of the probe tip and you should be centred over that edge. But what touch DRO does is it just gives you a little bit more finesse in working out whether you've touched off accurately. Just before we start we need to look at the touch DRO interface and this tool strip down the bottom here gives you a number of tools that you can use for extra functions. Now some of these would be familiar if you've got the regular style of DRO. So this one here gives you uh, like a step and repeat hole patterns. This one here gives you pitch circle diameter holes on an arbitrary circle. This one here is just for regular pitch circle diameter patterns of holes. But the one that we're going to use today is this one here for the touch probe. So let's tap that. And what you get is another panel that pops up here. Now I need to point out to you that I'm using the plus version of touch DRO. Now if you have the regular touch DRO app that you've downloaded from the Play Store, you won't have this little magic wand button in the center here. Now that's not necessary to do what we're going to do today, but it just gives you a few extra tools that you can use. And if you want the plus version of Touch DRO, you need to get in touch with Yuri, who runs the company. Now I believe that it's sort of, uh, it's going to be like a subscription model, or maybe it's a one-off payment, I'm not exactly sure. But Yuri has made me a beta tester, and he's allowed me to use this version so I can report back to him if there are any issues. So the little magic wand tool on the centre here just sort of automates some of the processes for edge finding and centre finding. But like I say, you don't need to use that for what we're doing today. So your regular version of Touch DRO would just have these four button positions around the outside. Now you'll also notice that there's a toggle here for internal and external edge finding. And you can turn them on separately. But we're going to go back to external. You can also set your position in absolute mode or incremental mode. Uh, you've got inches and millimetres of course. Now to touch off on an edge you simply choose the edge that you want to touch off on. So in my case it's the left hand edge. And what you'll notice then is you get this little animation telling you it's waiting for an input from the touch probe. Now you can reset that just by pressing with a long press and it goes back to its normal setting. So if you, if you try touching off and it goes wrong, just do a long press and it resets. Now I'm going to set up another camera so you can watch the uh, touch probe and also see the screen here and we'll touch off on our first edge and then offset to find the whole center. Okay now I went to edit this video last night and realized that through my mismanagement I'd forgotten to set one of the cameras to record and that was the one that was recording the touch DRO screen. 
So I'm having to mock this all up again. So the part in the vise is flipped over and the hole that you'll see drilled later has already been done. So just bear with me. This is basically what I did yesterday. And uh, you'll see me now offsetting from the left hand end of the part in the vise. So we're gonna to go to our touch probe screen. And we're going to activate this left hand button here. So I'm actually moving in to touch the left hand side of the part. So we'll do that. Now we're going to move the part across to touch the probe. So one, two, and three. Now the reason why I touched off three times is that there is a setting within Touch DRO that allows you to determine how many times you want to touch the part and then it averages out those three positions. So I've set mine to three, but you can do it just with one if you trust your touch probe. And then I'm going to set to incremental mode and I'm going to set the origin. Then up here in X, you see that we've got an offset of 0 0.94, 0 0.94. And what we can do then is lift the probe up and we're going to move across to 14.28. So the 0 0.94 is the offset to the center of the probe axis. So we can just keep winding until we get to 14.28. Okay, so that's our position where we're going to drill the hole, but I still need to center the probe between the vice jaws. So we're going to do that next. Okay, I've got the probe set up now between the vice jaws and clear of the part, and we can go back to our touch probe page. We need to change the Y axis to internal, and then we need to touch this button here, which will probe the what they call the near face. So we do that. Okay, so let's touch off against this near face. Okay, now I'm going to run the probe clear of the jaw and we're going to select the back face. Okay, and probe the back face three times. Okay, so we successfully probed the near and the back face, and we should now be able to set the origin. So once again, I'm going to do this in incremental mode, set origin. And there's the y-axis now position at 28.12, so we should be able to find the exact center. So let's drive the y-axis back to zero. Okay, so that's our exact center. What we're gonna do is lift the probe up now. We'll go back to our 14.28 and we should be able to drill the hole. Too far. <laughs> okay, 14.28 in X and we've just moved a little bit in Y but I'll bring that back to zero. So then we can go ahead and drill our hole should be exactly in place. I'll do a test after that and we can see how accurate it really is. I'm gonna go ahead now and I'll drill and tap. Now I'm drilling 3 16 for the ball and then I'll back that up with an M6 threaded hole for a socket head grub screw. And then we'll do the assembly and see how it fits. But before I take this part out of the vise, I'm gonna sweep between the jaws here with a dial test indicator and just see how close we got with that probe. So you can see I've still got touch DRO set in the current location where I just drilled the hole. And what we're going to do now is put the dial indicator on the spindle nose and we'll check to see how accurately we got set up between the vice jaws. All right, so I'm just going to move the job along. Okay, 
and I want to sweep between the jaws. Okay, I've got the indicator there zeroed out on this side here. This is the, the near jaw on the vise, so we'll spin this through 180 degrees. And right, I'm getting around about 0.1 of a millimeter. What's that about? Three thou, three and a bit thou. So I was hoping for better than that, uh, but that's what you get for doing this live on camera. I did trial this the other day and I was getting better results than what I did here now. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, maybe it was something to do with my technique when I was doing the edge finding. But I think it shows some promise and uh, there are some interesting applications you could do now with Touch DRO. It is possible to upload PNG images and then be able to digitize parts using that digital edge finder. So I certainly need to do some more work on this and fine tune my technique. But like I say, it's, a, it's an option. Uh, I think probably with my regular edge finder, I could have got a better result than what I'm showing here now. Okay, I'm going to take the part out of the vise now. We'll assemble the quill handle and we'll just see how it performs. To do the assembly, I'll need to do this on the machine because if I drop the ball bearing into that hole now, it would just fall right through. And I'm going to back up the ball bearing with a piece of Teflon. Now I'm using Teflon because I had it and it's sort of soft and squishy and resilient and I've been able to machine a dimple in the end of that to engage on the spherical surface of the ball. Now you don't have to use Teflon, you could use a strong spring of suitable dimensions, you could use some thick wall PVC tubing, basically anything that's sort of soft enough that you can put pressure on the ball bearing without locking it solid in that annular groove. Anyway, let's do this on the machine and we'll try this handle out. Okay, you can feel some resistance uh, with the Teflon against the ball bearing now. And that's not going to come off, but it can still rotate. There it is all fully assembled now. And the way this would work is you push in on the lever. You can reposition the boss to wherever you want that to go. Let it go and let it find one of the holes in the quill shaft extension. And then it just operates like a regular quill handle. Now in practice, I found that there's a few kinks. Uh, for example, it fouls on the selector lever here when you push it all the way in, and it fouls on the back gear selector up here. Now, I can fix that just by putting a slight kink in the steel shaft with the handle here. It doesn't need to come out by much, and that'll allow it to clear both those controls, and you'll be able to sweep it around a full 360 degrees without it clashing with anything. And what I'll do then is I'm gonna dismantle it. I'll parkerize all of the steel parts, I'll anodize the aluminium knob here and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. Now I must say I can't tell you how disappointed I was when I did that experiment with the probe and I was drilling the hole in that part yesterday and it was baffling because I had rehearsed that process about four times and each time I was getting consistent results with about 10 microns error and when I do it on camera I got 100 microns error. <laughs> so um, I started doing some investigation and what I worked out was that I hadn't cleaned the collet in the spindle of the bridge port when I put this probe in place. So I ran it with the dial indicator on the tip of the probe there and I was getting almost uh, one tenth of a millimeter of run out, which is what we saw in the experiment that I did. And now I've taken the probe out, I've cleaned the collet, put it back in the spindle and now I'm getting about 10 microns. Um, maybe, let me just zero that. Yeah, about 10 microns, so a hundredth of a millimeter. So that puts it back where it was when I was doing my initial research for doing this video. So just to show you <laughs> that you can get accurate results from this, I'm gonna do another test. I'm going to probe the inside of this collet block here and uh, we'll see if we can find the center. Then I'll put the dial test indicator back and we'll run a check on the edge and see if we've got it close. Okay, let's try again. So we're going to go back to our touch probe screen. And this time I'm going to use this magic wand button in the center here. Now, essentially what that does is it just automates the whole process for center finding. 
Oh, we've got a thunderstorm approaching. <laughs> okay, let me see if I can get through this before the power goes out. So, uh, let's use the magic wand button. Now, what we do is we touch off in four directions. So I'm going to touch off toward the front first. So one, two, three. Then I'm going to go to the back and I don't need to change anything on the screen if you're using the magic wand button. So one, two, three. Now we're going to go left and right. Okay, come back somewhere near the center and what we'll do now is we just simply say set origin. Now you notice on the screen here we've got four green ticks, so set origin. And there we are in there now, so all we need to do is bring X and Y to zero and we should be in the center of the part. Okay, so we're 0, 0, X and Y. That should be the exact center of the part. So I'm going to put a dial test indicator on the spindle and we'll run that around the inside of the square collet block and we'll just see how close we really are. Okay, I'm going to set that to zero. Let me bring the other camera over and we'll check it from two directions. Okay, let's see what we got. All right, I reckon that's 20 microns. Yeah, about 20 microns. So two hundredths of a millimeter, that's less than a thou. And uh, I think that that's probably as good as I would be able to get with any of my other edge finders or center finders. And the question then is, uh, is it worth having a touch probe and touch DRO? Well, it's up to you. It's, it's an alternative if you already have touch DRO and if you bother about buying one of these little touch probes. Uh, it does do the work of most of my other different edge finding and center finding solutions. It does have a couple of other tricks that you can use that I'm not able to show here in this video. So it's very versatile. Uh, whether it's more accurate or not, I don't know at this point. Remember, I've only had this thing for about uh, two weeks and I'm still playing with it and I'm still playing with the plus version of Touch DRO and all of the probing functions. But I just thought it was worth showing you and uh, hopefully now we can see that I, I fixed up <laughs> my, uh, my bad uh, from yesterday. Anyway, I'm going to put the quill handle together. I'll show you what that looks like. I've done all of the metal finishing on that and then we'll wind up. I've got this back on the machine now after doing all of the metal finishing. The park rising on this turned out great. Nice consistent charcoal grey colour and that finish will last indefinitely in my workshop without any sort of corrosion at all. And the anodizing on the knob here turned out great. Um, that was probably one of the best ones I've ever done. The colour took up almost completely within about two minutes and it's a nice deep consistent shade of red there are no watermarks or streaks or anything like that so that's just great it doesn't take me 10 years to work out how to do it <laughs> um, and the thing was the very first anodized part i ever made just worked and i thought oh this is easy like it, it's so simple and then after that i had failure after failure so sort of lulled into a false sense of security early on but 
I've just worked at it and I've sort of worked out a system now that gives me this you know, quite consistent result. So totally happy with that. Now I did put the kink in the handle here, the slight bend, and now I can run that in and I can adjust it without it hitting the back gear lever. So that part of it's great. I used this a fair bit yesterday on a machining operation and I just love the way that it works. The old handle, you really have to struggle to get it off the quill shaft extension reposition it and then bump it back on again to try to find the annular groove with the ball detent and it was just a bit frustrating and annoying but this just works seamlessly uh, absolutely love it okay well thank you for watching today uh, i did actually do some more work with the touch probe and i've been able to validate some of the edge finding results now unfortunately i did it just now and it's not going to make it into this video but what i did was i set up a one two three block in the vise and I put a six millimeter dowel pin in the collet and I ran the dowel pin up until it was touching the edge of the one, two, three block. And then I was able to subtract the diameter of the dowel pin and I set the micrometer dial on the X axis to zero at that point. And then I ran the probe back in and I kept probing that edge and then checking the result. And I reckon I've got it to within less than 10 microns. So it is accurate. Uh, I sort of doubted it before. I was sort of you know, doubting my results, but having done that test again, I'm pretty sure I got it right. Now you're going to see more of that touch probe in future videos. And in fact, in the next video, we're back working on the Stuart Turner 10H engine. So join me for that one. And I don't know, the cockatoos are just driving us insane at the moment. They've been hanging around for about three or four weeks with that horrible shrieking. And in fact, the neighbor came over the other day and said, have you got a gun? <laughs> and uh, I have got a gun, but uh, I wouldn't go around shooting native animals and birds and so on. That's sort of illegal. So we're just gonna have to put up with it. And they do move around actually. That's one of the good things. They sort of go and annoy our neighbors a uh, couple of doors down every now and then, and they're back here. And the poor possum is just running from tree to tree and the cockatoos are chasing after it. So it is what it is. We just gotta put up with it. Okay, thanks for watching today. I'll see you again soon. And uh, I've got some kangaroo footage uh, with the little baby Joey for you to enjoy. Okay, espresso. Cheers. Mm -hmm.